So this is my Mothman cocktail. Um, it's basically an old fashioned with uh, grapefruit juice added just because I'm not a huge liquor forward person. Um, so it's a teaspoon of sugar, three dashes of Angostura bitters, uh, one teaspoon of water, just to kind of let the sugar melt, um, two ounces of bourbon, and I just added ice and then poured the rest in the grape juice. And then for the garnish, these cute little eyes and ears for my Mothman. So the Mothman is a West Virginia story. Um, it's this cryptid that has been reported since like the 60s. When I was a kid in Virginia, uh, my dad told me the story about it just to like scare us of the woods and it worked. I mean, it's basically this like humanoid, very tall, muscular person, kind of almost like a Batman. These glowing red eyes and like little moth things and wings. The story came about with like a group of people saw some giant thing flying in the woods uh, near Point Pleasant, West Virginia, and reported it, and it like followed them out of town. So it was like this really giant creature that was just like following them, glowing red eyes, super freaked out. Um, and then right around the same time, several other people started reporting. And these weren't just like, I mean like regular people were seeing it, but like firefighters and biologists were reporting like some giant winged creature that was like unusual to the area. Suddenly there was all these reports of it and um, it made, you know, national news. And then it got associated with basically there was this like military-esque, toxic waste-esque place in West Virginia that people were thinking kind of in the season of like superheroes and whatnot of like, you know, Spider-Man got bit by a radioactive spider. Um, you know, there's all these like people who were like interacting with like chemicals and turning into creatures and like was Mothman um, a product of that. And so, um, you know, these stories started collecting and then I want to say in like 1967, this major bridge in West Virginia collapses and like 40 some people die. Um, it's a horrible tragedy. People are looking for like what happened, what caused this. And some of the stories that come out is that this creature caused the bridge to collapse. There's even been like a terrible movie made out of it. Um, but like, it's a very persistent legend. And even now, like, Point Pleasant has like a Mothman festival every year. They have uh, you know, like a museum and a statue and it's like very much like incorporated. Um, so it's like a cryptid that's both like very celebrated and like now part of like tourism, but also has like quite a hold on like a lot of people's imagination of this like thing flying in the night. In my own experience with Mothman, uh, I guess I was, I don't know, maybe like eight or nine when my dad first started talking about it. Um, almost as like a joke to like freak his kids out and it worked of like when you think about like looking out of your window in like the dark of night and just seeing like glowing eyes there and like the structure of a person and so uh, I was very freaked out just the idea of it um, and then at some point like you know going into teenage years being like oh it's okay it's like in West Virginia it's far away from where I live I don't have to like worry about seeing this. It was the case until about I guess like a year and a half ago some girlfriends and I were going camping and we were very close to Point Pleasant. Um, I'm not much of a camper, the woods freak me out, but it, these are some people who have like done parts of the Appalachian Trail. They are like very avid hikers. They love the outdoors, they love camping. Um, so since I was with a group of them and like we were gonna do like outdoor stuff and nature and like um, whitewater rafting. so. Under those circumstances, I was like, okay, cool, I can I can do this. And the first night, we, you know, build a fire, we have our two tents up, there's two girls in each tent, and um, I hear as, like, we're kind of, like, chatting in the back of, like, in, like just on, like, outside of, like, eyesight in the woods, um, it sounds like chattering. It's, like, teeth chattering. Um, and I remember thinking, like, well, that's a weird bug, and it's not, like, multiple, like, you know, when you hear, like, crickets or other, like, chirping noises from insects. Um, there's usually like a wave of them, but it was just like one set of like chattering, like, and it was like, it was creepy. It was really, really creepy. And so then the next day we go whitewater rafting. And when we go to, I want to say it was like some kind of like local like bar or pub to get like food and drinks afterwards. The bartender was like, oh, you're the girls at campsite 12. And we were like, how did you know that? And they're like, well, you're the only people staying there tonight. Um, like on the whole campsite premises. This was like early spring, so it was like a little bit chilly. And we were like, yeah, that's kind of weird that you would know this. And they're like, 
we sometimes like work there, like we know the owner, like you're just the only people who book this weekend. And then we ended up going to another place and getting like a different, you know, whatever local food. We were just kind of like exploring around. And then the next place also goes, you're the girls at campsite 12. And we were like, I, this is kind of unusual. Like, it's just like a weird way to put it. It's weird that you would bring that up. Um, it just kind of made us feel a little bit like exposed in a strange way of like, why would you know that we're staying there? And that night when we were building a fire, um, we go to bed a little bit earlier, we're tired from whitewater rafting, but then just also like kind of creeped out from a lot of the town knowing that we're all, that just four girls, four women are like all staying at this like campsite solo, there's no one else around. In case we go to bed um, and at one point in the middle of the night, my friend and I said we were sharing a tent, she has a blow up mattress and the mattress starts to deflate and she like is turning cause it's like slowly deflating just you know, as blow up mattresses do. And as she turns, she flips over and the whole tent flips over. And it's just like very like discombobulating for a second. There's just like limbs flying and arms lying. And um, she's like, oh, my mattress deflated. It's really right side the tent up. Um, I'm just on like, kind of like this like mat thing. And so she walks into the woods by herself um, like 20 minutes up to go to like where like the bathrooms are and there's like outlets and stuff so she can like plug in her mattress and like blow it up again, whatever. So I'm in the tent alone. I don't realize that like I can't tell, it's like dead silent in the way that like the woods are in the middle of the night and I hear the chattering again. And again, it's just like one set, it's like one insect going like, and it's getting, it starts, it comes towards our tents and then it starts surrounding our tents and I just like hear chattering and it's like so strange. And I, I kept thinking of like, you know, like I grew up like we had woods, woods behind my house as a kid. Like I'm not, West Virginia is not that different than Virginia. We're not that far from my home. And like the fact that there's like an insect noise I've never heard before. I'm like, that's so strange. Eventually my friend comes back, you know, whatever we go to sleep. The next morning we're all brushing our teeth and my friend for our first friend, so one of the girls in the other tent goes, I had the worst dream last night. I just had this awful nightmare. I dreamed that, that a man opened up our tent and he had glowing eyes and was just looking at us. Didn't do anything and I was so freaked out, I just stayed there and eventually like, he zipped the tent back up again and just walked away. That was it, like nothing. And she was like, awful dream, must have been freaked out by people talking in town. Like my imagination got crazy, whatever. I've never, I've never experienced that before. Like that's just creepy. And then the girl who's also in her tent gets really quiet. And on the drive, she didn't say anything while we were at the campsite, but on the drive right home, she's like, I had the same dream as you. I had the same dream that someone opened up her tent, had glowing eyes and was just looking at us. Didn't do anything, didn't touch us or anything like that just looked at us and then eventually zipped the tent back up. And like that with my chatter teeth experience, which I still don't know what that was. Um, all I can say is I have not been back to West Virginia. I will experience Mothman at a safe distance with my cute little cocktail. Um, so cheers and enjoy the night.